I guess we should dive right in so we can talk about these authors. Yeah, I guess I, I'm looking at your script and I see the uh, the about the author section. Ben seems to have done some research on this. <laughs> you know so, I'm not going to, right? Uh, yeah. You know that I'm not going to. That's true. All right. You're listening to Words About Books. I'm Nate, and that's Ben. And Ben, what's our what's our author name that combines the two of us into one person? Because we're, oh, we're reading Leviathan Wakes. We're um like like Brian and B Stephen. All right, that's our that's our fusion dance character. Yeah. So today we're talking about Leviathan Wakes, the first book in the Expanse series by James S. A. Corey, which is the pen name of two dudes named Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. And I guess you, you want to jump right into the about the author because you were having a hard time not, um, or you were having a hard time containing your excitement about this. Oh, stereotyping horribly? Yeah, yeah. Short hair guy with glasses and long hair guy without glasses. And I was supposed to guess which one helped out George R. R. Martin. Yes. And also which guy wrote the original D&D, I guess it's not D&D, a tabletop campaign that this book was originally based off of. And which guy was bringing the science knowledge and presumably writing Holden, <laughs> one of the main characters. Well, really, I got it wrong across the board. Yeah, you did. the important part here. Yeah, so... Just horribly wrong. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what their, their hair situation is today, but in the picture you're looking at, um, the, the guy you're referring to long hair is Ty Frank. And the guy with the short hair and the glasses is Daniel Abraham. And Ty Frank was an assistant to George R. R. Martin, and he lived out in New Mexico, as did Daniel Abraham. There's there's a bunch of like sci-fi authors out in New Mexico, and they kind of hang out. And oh. so, okay, Ty Frank hosted a tabletop role playing game for some of them. I don't know what the system was. But he had created his own universe, which is sort of the Expanse universe. I'm sure it's been changed a little bit from the, the game. But Daniel Abraham came to him and said, you know, this is a really cool universe. I'd like to write a novel in it. Is that cool? And initially, Abraham was just sort of taking notes from Frank. And then they realized that Frank was going to probably contribute a lot more to this and it turned into just like a full co-authorship and the way i read they described writing it was they alternated chapters and they didn't say who did which character but they alternated chapters and then they went back and rewrote and re-edited each other's stuff to the point where they said that they do not know which person wrote which line it's it's almost impossible to determine because they've both had their hands all over it so much so that it is a true co-authorship now we had a private theory going on <laughs> as we were reading it that because the holden and miller chapters that's how it alternates by the way there's two point of view characters holden and miller they're very different kind of in tone like Miller's chapters are kind of this detective noir thing and Holden is um a insufferable dumbass <laughs> I can't stand I I really dislike Holden and I understand he persists through like the entire Expanse series so that uh actually may wind up be being an issue for me <laughs> um, it wasn't as big an issue for me as it was for you, but I agree. Like, I can see this might be a problem. I didn't look up anything before I read the book. I went in totally cold. I think the only thing is I had seen the first episode of The Expanse TV show, and I didn't remember much about it. I watched it at a friend's house. I was talking through most of it anyway. <laughs> was he like, Ben, shut 
up. No, oh my gosh. I mean, he was sh- he just watch. put it on. He was like, you got to see this Expanse show. And then you proceeded to not see it. I pay attention. Don't... Here's the thing. <laughs> if you have ever told me, Ben, you need to check out this TV show. I haven't. I, I, I just never watch TV shows. People recommend me. I don't watch a lot of TV shows in general. I have a very weird selection of TV shows. I'm like very into, and I will watch all those as soon as like, I will watch the Witcher as soon as it comes out. I will watch every episode. The JoJo's. I don't. Well, I did actually. Yeah, I did watch all the JoJo's, but there are JoJo seasons. I don't like, like, I don't like part three of JoJo (laughs) and I don't really like part five. Anyway, the point is I don't watch a lot of TV. And if you sit me down and try to make me watch TV... That's the wrong environment. That's the wrong (laughs) environment. you got to trick me into thinking it was my idea, okay? I I don't know what what it is about me that when somebody recommends a show... I still haven't watched Breaking Bad. That's fine. I still haven't watched it. I'm sure it's great. I watched the first season, and I went, all right, bye. Anyway, I was not surprised, and in fact, it made a lot of things click in my mind to find out that this started off in a tabletop role play session yeah that didn't surprise me either because holden is every lawful good character yep. i've ever played with <laughs> yep. in any D session i never play lawful good i can't even pretend to be lawful good i am always like chaotic good or neutral good because i often think the law is stupid but in Holden's case, the law is like he he's what I wind up playing with whenever somebody plays a lawful good character because they do whatever the fuck they want to do. And then whenever anybody else breaks a law, they're like, no, you can't do that. OK, I was going to say uh, most lawful good players I play with don't actually follow the law. But no, we're on the same page here. We're yeah, we're, we're on the same page here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh <laughs> yeah, they're not asking when they go into a new kingdom, what are the laws here? They're just like, oh no, I steal a Martian warship? That's salvage rights. You shoot Space Mangala? You're a murderer. Yeah, how could you? He needed to be brought to justice, dick. Yeah, whereas I'm sitting here, chaotic good Ben, if you see Joseph Mangala, you take the shot. I don't care where you see him, you could see him at the grocery store. You take the shot. <laughs> He's a fucking monster. Who murders, he, he sews babies together and, and just watches to see what happens and calls that science. You take the shot. I don't care how surrendered he is. And the thing is, he wasn't. <laughs> he, he, was, he was not. Holden and Miller feel so different that I almost think they're the brain children of different authors, but... Yeah, yeah. Who's to say who's responsible for the stuff I, I like or don't like? Well, I I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a comparison to Miller and Holden later once we... Once we establish who they are, probably around the time that uh, Mangala gets shot in the face, mm, mm, we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot to talk about by the end of this. <laughs> that being said, I guess I'll just give you the preview now. I do like the book. I gave it four yes. out of five. So did I. I. I have I have some issues with some of the characters' decisions, but like I'm angry in a good way. It means I cared. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just, just take that for what it's worth. It's, it's my, my, my flat monotone probably doesn't convey how much I genuinely enjoyed the book. I'm, I'm very, very happy. This is the greatest moment of my life. There were some, some criticisms of this book that, like, where were all the black people or the LGBTQ or why are, why are the women? There were black people. Were there? I mean, Ni- Naomi's. Uh, everything (laughs) that's true i think she's described there's a there's definitely people described as dark-skinned i i guess i guess my thing is it wasn't something that ruined my enjoyment because i'm the whitest white bread white person ever but i can understand how other people would be like oh this is supposed to be distant future sci-fi uh sure doesn't feel that way at some times the only thing I would say in regard to that, I I don't know if I, I, I think saying where's all the black people is kind of an uncharitable thing because I do think they did 
a lot to mention that there is a lot of racial diversity. And I would agree with that. But I will say the the sexuality thing does hold a bit of water for me because I was also a little taken aback by some of Miller's commentary on like <laughs> women and um his just weird like even today not even in the far future if you were a detective it seems weird to just assume everyone is heterosexual all the time which miller does like he he just i kept waiting to see that like like julie mao had a girlfriend or yeah something, something like that because yeah. because it just made sense that i don't know you're you're on a ship with people for years and years and years you, you know you I don't know. It it made sense to me that there would be a little bit more uh, sexual fluidity, I guess. But I I just thought it was weird how everyone was assumed heterosexual. I guess maybe that's my weird liberal. Again, it's it's going to bother some people and not other people. Yeah, and I, I guess. can understand why it would bother you if you assume everyone you meet is cishet until proven otherwise. It's not going to bother you. <laughs> yeah if you don't yeah. it's probably going to be a little weird to you and i don't know that that's wrong as long as you treat everybody with respect and everything but it doesn't say anything anti-lgbt so real quick the setting is n- what near future let's say with uh, like 200 years in the future or something like that yeah we've colonized mars but i i guess we haven't terraformed it we've just plopped down some domed cities colonized the moon i think that We've got a whole bunch of hollowed out asteroids in the belt. We've got moons of Jupiter, moons of Saturn. I think it goes all the way out to Neptune. I don't remember that, but it's I don't. either Neptune or, or Uranus, where there's like a couple thousand people. It's not very much all the way out there, but we basically we've spread out throughout the solar system. They're also looking at trying to somehow colonize Venus. They've been doing that for the last like eight decades or something like that. So that hasn't gone anywhere, but we're we're spread out throughout the, the solar system. We haven't gone beyond the solar system, though. We don't have faster than light travel. There aren't any aliens. It's all people all the time. Yeah, and the tech is is very like what is plausible now with a few leaps in science. There's no artificial gravity. I mean, there's artificial gravity, but it's generated by like thrust it's not it's not true artificial gravity where you just flip a switch and and it generates gravity waves or something right this isn't the the starship enterprise yeah so everything's still uncomfortable it's like the yeah people i was gonna who, say no one is comfortable on these ships you actually got the the word i was thinking of the people feel like astronauts it feels like an astronaut experience yeah they're shooting up tons of drugs to stay conscious under higher levels of gravity when they're burning, yeah, burning they, they have more. to deal with the stuff that like fighter pilots deal with at high G. If you're gonna fly at like a speed of six G, like speed is measured in G's because that's what essentially matters to them. It doesn't really matter how fast your ship can go; it's how much can the human body withstand before it liquefies. So yeah, that's our setting, and you were wrong, Ben. There's actually three point of view characters. Oh, I guess very technically, yes. <laughs> very briefly, we've got Julie Mao in the prologue. She was captured by pirates. She was thrown in a locker and just left there. She finally busts herself out, finds that the ship she's on is derelict, goes looking around and finds a reactor core or whatever it's called, just covered in talking human remains. That's it. That's it for her. <laughs> Bye, Julie. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting first chapter, and I oh, yeah. commented very, very reminiscent of Game of Thrones, the way it starts with the zombies, and yeah, then it's a you just forget book. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not entirely. You, well, for a you know, while. You know, you know that, like, this is going to come back up. It's going to come back yeah. up, and it's going to be a problem. And, yeah. and her ship... It actually factors into what's going on. So let's talk about good boy James Holden, your favorite character, and mm-hmm. mine, and everyone's. He's a good boy. 
Is he? He's he's lawful good. It's on his character sheet, Ben. So yes, he is. He, he it's weird. It's weird because like right off the bat, like when you're introduced to Holden, he's on an ice hauler, which seems like a very unglamorous assignment. He washed out of the military, the Earth right. military. He he just seems like a total loser burnout. Yes. One, exactly. That's what I was expecting, actually. And that's not what I got. He's having a sexual relationship with one of his crewmates, and he wants it to be more, but she doesn't. And he keeps like trying to talk her into it. And it just, it doesn't present him in the best light. Well, Ben, Ben, would it help you to know that it's not one of his crewmates? It's one of his subordinates because he's second in command on this ship. Yeah, I mean... It, I, I'm not trying to say he's he's a bad guy for having this relationship. What I'm trying to say is he comes off as a man. He's who, trying to force the issue after being told no more than one. Well, and yeah, you're you're making this sound a lot worse than than it no, is. You're right. You're right. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is he he has an idea of what he wants, and it is a relationship. He doesn't want it to be just sex where she does want that. She doesn't want it to be more complicated than that. And he just keeps trying to convince her that this is the best thing. And it's like, in my opinion, she's very obviously not reciprocating and just trying to tell him what she needs to tell him to go away. Right. And I have this thing too, where I don't like to have to tell somebody no more than once. (laughs) I don't... um, enjoy like if i say no i don't want to do a thing don't i don't like being convinced and i mean there's there's varying degrees of this like obviously it's like ben if you do ben come on let's go to this concert and i'm like no it's like oh come on it'll be fun that's fine it's like ben you should you should come with us to this thing and i'm like no oh come on it'll be fun no i don't really want to go oh come on it'll be fun yeah, the thir- the th- going. Like- yeah the third time it's like shut up and that's kind of where she is with this guy. And so you get the impression that he's just kind of like a loser. Yes. No, the, exactly. He's on he's on an unglamorous little ice bucket and he's been there for years and he doesn't have any aspirations of doing anything more. And he's former military. He washed out and he he does kind of come across as like... When like people don't even seem to really like him, the 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 rogue or the scoundrel, but like a little nicer. <laughs> he wishes. Yeah, yeah, a less worldly Han Solo, maybe. <laughs> yeah, this girl, she's like, yeah, we can have fun while we're on this stupid ship, but I'm gonna get off this ship, and you're not, and I'm not sticking around. Like I, I don't want to be your girlfriend because well, why don't you want to stick around? Loser. Why don't you want to stick around? It'll be fun. Because this is garbage, and I got my whole life ahead of me, and you're you're some dipshit townie. Yeah, but it'll I'm be going fun. to college. You're going to stay in town. I'm out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go meet hot college guys who who are hot and rich. Sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm rich in friends. And then everyone <laughs> around him is like, nope, no, you are not. Nope, yeah. we are paid to be together. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> and so that that's how we're introduced to Holden. And so I thought this is going to be like a character who's like um, rises to the occasion, yes. which yep. it is the arc they do try to force him into. But I don't think it works. Obviously, I would agree with that as well. I don't think I I I I think I know what the author the the one singular author who is a fusion of two people. I think I know what what they're trying to do, and I feel like it misses the mark. Mhm mhm mhm. So, yeah, they're on a they're on an ice hauler. It's 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 a living and they get a distress call from the same ship that Julie Mal was on prior to being captured by those pirates and their ship is the only ship in range to go intercept the distress call. And there's some law that they have to follow, so they have to go out there and they have to investigate. So they go to do that, and and I guess you could just be holding for a moment. 
And I'll be Holden's captain, whose name I forget. Well, we'll we'll get into why we forget his name. We also <laughs> will forget who the comm officer is by the end of this, and several other people. <laughs> All right, Holden, what do you, what do you think? You think we got to go down there and check it out? I, uh, I mean, I kind of don't want to. You're gonna go down there and you're gonna check it out, but Holden, no heroics, okay? Something smells funny. You get out of there. I don't want another incident like the last time where you were a big damn hero and everybody loved you. Oh, I forgot that's what he does. Is that, is that what he does? I know the captain said no heroics. I don't remember Holden being particularly enthusiastic about this trip. Yeah, I know, but that's the thing. It's like no heroics. You're a hero, Holden. I know you're a hero at heart. Oh, no okay. No heroics this time. I mean, I know okay. you haven't had to... This is the only job you've had. You've been, you've been hauling water ice for the last 40 years but <laughs> but no heroics okay <laughs> okay all right i don't I, want you to heroically get out there and grab any ice okay i you just you see what's going on and you get back to the ship okay yeah there was a guy who lost his hand and he's gonna get a sweet prosthetic and it's like if i would have been there me holden if i would have been there i could have saved his hand man but he got Holden, crushed by I, that ice. Holden, I don't think you can stop thirty tons of ice with your with your with your manly fists. But goddamn it, if any man could, it would be you. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Goddamn it, someone has to try. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. One wonders why we don't use robots for this in the future. <laughs> 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 we got everything but robots. <laughs> anyway, we we have we have robots without the artificial intelligence. Is that good enough? It would have been, yeah. actually, yeah. You don't need a very smart robot to grab an, an iceberg off of Saturn's ring. You, you really just need, like, a one of those claw machines. Yeah, but you know what the problem is? Those robots don't have a moral compass. God damn it, that's what you need out here. You need someone who's intrinsically good, who's got a ironclad idea of what the law is and or should be. Holden, I really don't have time for another one of your speeches about the freedom of information. Okay? I, I know you believe that everyone is entitled to know everything and that the truth will come out and that the truth we is need, a human we right. Need to, I, I, Captain, I'm just saying we all need to upload our nudes to a database that everyone on the ship can access so that we just we dispel the power that they have over us. Get in the ship, Holden. <laughs> All right, no heroics. So, how do you, do you want to go back and forth between Holden and Miller, or because that's how the book does it? And yeah, we'll, we'll it, go back and forth between Holden and Miller. All right, so Holden, he's gonna get his crew together. He's going to that ship. Meanwhile, we go to our other point of view character, Detective Miller, and I think we learn his first name like towards the end of the book. It's like Josephus. 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 Oh, that's yeah. that's much better. Detective Miller has a really dumb hat and also a partner named Detective Havelock. It's like Sherlock, but instead of being sure, I just have one. <laughs> so I have a lock on this case. But um that's a little Havelock joke for you. <laughs> I wish he would do that. Actually, <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, Miller, I've been, I've been, I've been on the rock. I've been on series for a few minutes now, and I'm thinking about getting my stand-up career going again. Yeah, the only problem is, like everyone on series is horribly racist towards Earth Earthers. Sorry, man. Well, yeah, but that's the thing, you know. Everybody likes Earth comedy, though. Yeah, I but I think I can make like it on the on the TV, they don't want to have to like see you in person. I think I can make it happen. Also, you know, if anybody gives me shit, I grew up in a gravity well, and I could just rip them in half with my bare arms <laughs> because you guys can't even stand up under the weight of the atmosphere on Earth. So this Sad. would be like you attacking some kind of Tolkien dwarf and. They got biceps the the size of your goddamn chest, and yeah, probably just yeah. punch a hole right through you, you skinny little prick. Yeah, Miller and and the, <laughs> and the Belters, as they're called, they're they're 
tall and lanky, like abnormally tall and lanky because they didn't grow up under gravity. Yeah, they're like seven to eight feet tall, very long bones, knobby joints, elongated skull to some extent. They actually, in the TV show, this was part of the episode I saw, they have a guy play a belter who has some kind of disease that makes him look like this. Oh, Mike Marfans? Yes, that's exactly it. I was I was going to look up the name, but yeah. Nice. I've got yeah. you covered. I've got a database of knowledge right here. Yeah, so if you ever want to imagine what they look like, look that up. So yeah, Miller and Havelock. Have a lock. I know. It's I I know. Because it's uh, like I have. It's like I have a lock on the case. Ba-dum-ps. Yeah. They have a lock on these local gangs and their protection racket rackets are just disappearing. They're just gone. Without a trace. Put a pin in that. That's good That's police work. <laughs> we're winning. Yeah. Scared them off. Yeah, that they must saw have a lock coming and they were like, shit, that guy has. A lock. That, that guy will break me in half. <laughs> Let's get out of here. So, while they're doing all that, put a pin in that. That'll come up later. Miller is given a job to find Julie Mao by her family, and then grab her and ship her back home to to the moon. Yeah, we call that a kidnap job. Yeah. Did you know it was called a kidnap job? Because every, every single person who hears you talk about this is probably going to ask you if it's a kidnap job. And I am going to just say yes and hope for the best. Nice. So we also learned that there's this thing called the OPA, which is the Outer Planets Alliance, <clears throat> which is dedicated to trying becoming like the third power. You've got Earth, you've got Mars, and then that's it. <laughs> they basically extend their will throughout the entire solar system and the OPA is trying to basically carve out a place for the Belters and Jupiter and Saturn and all the other lesser planets beyond Saturn, all two of them. So the OPA, though, it's talked up as a big thing. They don't really seem all that big, important, or powerful ever, really. Like, like they can shake down some local businesses, but... If they're going to fight a war, uh, it it's going to be a one-sided ass beating. The OPA is kind of like this it's kind of like the mafia where like anyone can say they're in it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> but, part of the problem. Yeah, so the, no one really knows like there's a lot of people out there who are like, you know, your your Alex Jones types on on the radio going like, "I'm the OPA and we're going to we're going to get them." We're going to get them tonight. There's going to be a big thing happening in like six months. Like JFK Jr. is going to come back and run as Donald Trump's vice president six and months from gonna now. And they're going to liberate and they're going to liberate the asteroid belt with their manly packs. Yep. Yeah. So the OPA is kind of like, like there's a real side to it. And then there's like a QAnon side to it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are people in the OPA that are really rational and reasonable and don't want a war because they know they will get stomped to death. And there are others that's like, well, get our guns! We're gonna go! We're gonna go outside in our spacesuits and we're gonna fire our AKs wildly in the air at these spaceships. But you can't actually fire an AK because there's not enough gravity, and the force of the AK will actually knock you off the <laughs> the rock you're standing on. So. That would be awesome. That'd be a great YouTube video. <laughs> I'm fighting for freedom. No, 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 no. Lies. <laughs> so yeah, don't um. Don't fire your AK when you're on a very small asteroid. That's one thing I did learn from this book. That's a little science fact I'm going to keep with me. might be valuable one day when when Elon Musk exiles me to the outer planets. And he's not the guy with the dick rocket. That's Bezos. That's Bezos. Okay. Blue Origin has the dicks. Okay. Yeah. SpaceX has a, a sleeker design. So I really like the way this was set up with Miller as a unraveling of a mystery. I think Miller's... that was a smart call to both introduce us to the world and to get us invested in 
in unraveling this mystery that's unfolding before us. Miller's chapters almost feel neuromancer-esque to me. Absolutely. Yeah, that's they have that they have a language that seemed like it was neuromancer and I think at one point they talk about Nu Yen. Yeah, they do. There is like direct references to yes. other sci-fi stuff. Yeah. There's a bunch of references to Dune, including like an outright quote in Julie Mao's journal. <laughs> yeah. Which I loved. <laughs> I think I highlighted that and I just I put something like a sigh or something or Ben's going to love this. I did. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. But yeah, they use like fungus and stuff to synthesize food. I mean, That's fungus neat. is food, so. <laughs> Yeah, but they synthesize it into things that aren't, well, that taste like things that aren't fungus. Mocklet. Yeah, mocklet. You want to rub some fungal mocklet all over my body? I already started. <laughs> so that's that's the setup for Miller. So he's he's got this weird case where all these, these middle management type thugs are leaving the asteroid series and he's got to find julie mao and he doesn't really seem all that interested in doing that so let's go back to your your bro and mine holden can i just say i've never met a person named holden that i like (laughs) have you met anyone named holden i have oh my god and there's holden caulfield this guy's Last name is Holden. Does that help? The hell's his first name? James. Oh, shit. I actually thought his first name was Holden this whole time. No, it's James <laughs> Holden. Oh, God. This is as embarrassing as when I thought Master Chief's first name was Master. <laughs> Did you know Alex's last name is Kamal? That's like briefly referenced. I don't, the only thing I know about Alex is that he's Martian, he speaks with a Texan accent. Oh wait, he's the Martian? I thought Amos was the Martian. Nope, Amos is from Earth. Oh my god. Or Amos might, I think Amos is from Earth. He was could in be wrong. the military. I thought yeah. he was in the Martian military, but Alex I guess... is definitely in the Martian military. I thought only Amos and James were in the military before. No, because when... They're in one of the firefights holding remarks about Alex just being just piloting and just taking orders. He's like, that's military training for you. So here's the problem with with Alex and Amos. I can't remember. Why them. are you saying Amos? Amos? It's Amos. Is a- a- A-M-O-S is Amos? Yes. I'm calling him Amos. I'm calling him <laughs> Amos just to <laughs> you now. It's Amos. It's always been Amos. I mean, like maybe in in like Mexico, I, they say I Amos. I guess famous Amos cookies. That... Yeah. <laughs> All right. With an American accent, it's Amos. <laughs> Amos. <laughs> oh, look, God. Look, here, here's, here's Holden's crew of not heroes, okay? Okay. You've got Naomi, last name I forgot. She's the second in command to the second in command and a girl that's important put a pin in that pen that's important okay then you've got alex and 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 amo amonis amonis you've got alex and, and am amos got <laughs> all right yeah you've got alex and amos all right and all i know is one, one or possibly both of them were in the military, and Amos likes prostitutes, and Alex is a pansy ass. Alex is the pilot. Amos is the Amos is the engineer. Okay, th- this was an unmitigated disaster. So, <laughs> her name is Naomi Nagata. Okay. She's the chief engineer, and she's a builder. Yeah, Amos. But- Okay, Amos fine. Burton is a mechanic <laughs> and I don't remember his last name. I don't and believe an you. Earther. You wrote this shit down. <laughs> Alex Kamal is the pilot and former Martian Congressional Republican Navy pilot. <laughs> is that real? Yes. <laughs> okay. MCRN. Mars Mars C- Congressional Republic Navy pilot. All right. And you know who you're forgetting. Um, oh, oh, um, Dr. Shed. Shed, yeah. 
and his name is Shed, so that they can make one joke where somebody says bloodshed. Yeah, yeah, that that did happen. You're right. So yeah, we got this this crack team of non heroes, and they go to the Scapoli. That's the that's the ship. Scopuli. Whatever, bro. <laughs> I will do whatever the f- I want. <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> You're gonna get a lot of bad pronunciations, mother. <laughs> it's my gimmick, and I'm just gonna lean in. I don't it think harder. it's a gimmick. <laughs> it's it's both a gimmick and reality, Ben. It's both That's a what gimmick makes it a good and gimmick. a serious problem. <laughs> it's both a gimmick and a speech impediment. All right, so you go to this ship whose name I'm not going to say anymore, and it's been breached by a shape charge instead of a torpedo. There are no bodies inside. All the atmosphere has been vented. So that's all weird, right? That's weird. So they're going to go, they're going to power the ship back on, and that's when Holden's like, wait a minute. The ship's not on. How can a beacon be on? And that's when they find it, Ben. They find a dummy beacon. And on the bottom of the beacon, there's a piece of tape. And written on that piece of tape in Sharpie is, Mars was here. (laughs) It's not that stupid, but yes. It is basically (laughs) like, oh, okay. Like the battery has a Martian serial number on it. A Martian military serial number. Hey, hey, real quick. Can um, Can I roll a insight check? All right, roll it. Eight. Okay, so you have discerned this battery has a Martian military serial number on it, and you're like, you're pretty sure that can't be faked in any way? That's a low roll, and you just gave me information on it, so I'm pretty sure that's wrong, but (laughs) it would be metagaming if if my character thinks that's what happened, so I have to go with it. Okay. (laughs) And yeah. Holden Holden decides I'm done being a hero. We got to leave only for him to get a radio call from his captain whose name we still don't remember that pirates in a ship that has a cloaking system, you know a thing that no other ships seem to have? Pirates in a cloaked ship have just locked on to the ice freighter and have launched torpedoes at it. So it's a given that this ice freighter that has no weapons of any kind is gonna get hit by these torpedoes, Ben. Jim, I want you to stay there. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to help clean us up after we get hit by the torpedoes. We're gonna brace as best we can, and then and then you come pick us up, and and, and we'll just we'll we'll be okay. We'll be okay. <laughs> It was basically like, Holden, keep keep uh, broadcasting an SOS and, and make sure that you, you're a witness here so we don't just get killed off. Why don't you be Holden and you'll you'll talk to me, Addy. Is that how you say that? How, how would you say it? Aid? <laughs> okay, you're going to need to throw in another D and an I in there, okay? <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, Gatorade, Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so I'll be I'll be Addy and you 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 James Holden contact me. Alright. <clears throat> so you're receiving a call from me, right? James, it's really not the time. I'm about to be uh, blown up here. I was, I was kind of hoping that would be enough to uh, get you to back off for five seconds. Hey, so about our relationship. See, you're going to need someone to like swoop in and save the day and or just broadcast this James, SOS. James, until James, 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 shut the f*** up. Okay, I'm, I'm real busy right now. Okay, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to deflect all the missiles that are coming at me. I'm, I'm shooting lasers and static at them. I just need you to just shut the f*** up for once in your life, James. Yeah, but like, what about us? Like, like I know we're, we we have sex. It's pretty awesome, right? It's pretty awesome. Solid, at least an eight out of ten. 
I would be so kind as to give you an eight and a half. And like, you know, like, don't you want there to be more to our relationship after you get out of the whole being captured by pirates and sold in slavery? Like, don't you want... Addy, oh God, what, why did you turn off those deflecting lasers? <laughs> You're going to get us all killed, Addy. <laughs> They're like, all right, they're torpedoes. They're just going to hit the ship. They're going to knock out the power. <laughs> Actually, they were nukes. <laughs> the ship is now vapor. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that's the old actually they were nukes problem where there is now no longer a ship. Well, 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 I have a plan, okay? I have a plan. Get me, get me the coordinates to that ship. I'm going to send them the dossier of everyone on that ship. They're going to know they didn't just blow up a ship. They killed a bunch of people, Ben. Oh, they're scanning us with lasers now, Captain. <laughs> I'm, maybe send it fast enough. Keep sending it. <laughs> uh, what? They the... need to know there are people over here, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee they do now, Captain. They definitely know we are over here now, Captain. They are turning away and leaving for some reason. Hopefully... Huh. The embarrassment, the, the cringe was just too much for them to bother engaging with anymore. Yeah, and... that must be it. Clearly, there isn't more, something more nefarious to this whole situation. Uh, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going, I'm going to broadcast that SOS. But I'm also going to broadcast a general message on all wavelengths and tell everyone what happened here. But I'm also going to pull out this battery and show that it's a Martian serial number. You I'm not think... saying that Mars had anything to do with this, but isn't it really weird that like there was a Martian there was a piece of Martian military equipment next to the scene of a crime? Isn't that weird? Don't draw any inferences though. Do your own research, guys. I'm getting a call. Um it is from Spotify. <laughs> they would like to offer you a hundred million dollars to to be exclusive to their platform oh well unfortunately we have contracts with p and r or whatever so we we've got to decline until we get out from under this contract which i guess we do at some point and just never think about them again all right and on that joke about joe rogan's misinformation we are going to have to cut the episode. It's a short one this week, but this was all done as one big recording session, and I think this is probably the best place to end the first one right after we've got the, the situation established and my hatred for Holden established, and uh, we can jump in next week with the consequences of Holden's idiotic actions. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of Words About Books. If you would like to reach out to us, tell us you liked it, you hated it, or if you have any suggestions for future stuff, message us over at WABpod on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram, Words About Books Podcast. You can check us out streaming every Monday on Twitch at twitch.tv slash words about books. You can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash WABpod. And if you want to hear me rant about many things that do not make the podcast, you can check out our blog at blog.wordsaboutbooks.ninja. Thank you all very much, and good night. Good night.